Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. So today is a first for me. This is going to be the first time that I have cooked with goat. So had some good friends that had a goat that got butchered and uh, they come over here most every Sunday because every Sunday at the Galley of the Sun is a huge feast with a bunch of guests. They wanted me to cook something with a goat. Well, I have made beef berria tacos before many times and it's turned out great. Uh, I've used Sam the Cooking Guy's recipe. I have used Chef Tom's recipe from ATBBQ, the sauce channel. And they both came out very good. I've also used Guga's recipe from Sous -Vide Everything. Knowing how many people I have to feed and looking at the size of my Dutch ovens, I thought to myself, self, uh, you're going to have to use two Dutch ovens. And if you're going to use two Dutch ovens, why don't we cook this two different ways? So we are going to use Sam the Cooking Guy's recipe for beef berdia, but we're going to use goat instead. We're also going to use Chef Tom's recipe, use goat instead. And then we'll put those together and see which comes out better. I will also use a feature of Guga from Sous -Vide Everything, his recipe. Uh, so what we're making here really is called quesabria or red tacos. When you make those, uh, you're going to take the tortilla at the end and typically you dip it in the consomme and then you put it on a griddle and you crisp that up and put your filling in there with the cheese. It's almost a cross between a taco and a quesadilla. It is out of this world. Well, Sometimes you don't have enough consomme left over. You definitely want some to dip your tacos in. So Guga makes a flavored oil, which you dip your shells in to crisp them up. So we'll be doing that too. Back in 1519, Herman Cortez and the conquistadors arrived in Mexico and they brought with them a hell of a lot of goats. They weren't too keen on goat meat themselves, it being a little gamey, a little tough. But the Mexicans took that and made something incredible out of it. Beria comes from the Mexican state of Jalisco, which they also, not only did they invent this incredible thing, but they invented tequila and mariachi music. It's also the home of the city of Puerto Vallarta, which the director and I visited just a few weeks ago. Traditional Beria, the way it was first made, was ate on bread or just handfuls of it. It wasn't until the 1950s that they added a lot of broth to it to make it basically a consomme, uh, a super stew. It wasn't until 2001 that a restaurant in Tijuana, Mexico, Tacos Aaron, came up with the quesabria, which was to take that incredible meat from a brilla, put that on a taco with a lot of cheese, put it on a griddle, get it all good and crisped up, and then serve it with some of that consomme to dip in. The evolution of this dish is very interesting and uh, the results are just incredible. First thing we're gonna do is get Sam the Cooking Guy's version of the berria ready to go into the oven. So I have here about five pounds of goat meat. It is chunked up into about one inch cubes. We're gonna season that with a good amount of salt and pepper. Get that mixed up and we'll set it aside. There we go. Wash the paws. Next, we're gonna start developing that incredible consomme. So what I have here is a collection of dried peppers. Uh, if you want the recipe for Sam the Cooking Guy's version, I will put the link down in the description. Um, because I am cooking so much, I have doubled his recipe, so I don't wanna give you the amounts and you know think you have to cook five pounds at a time. And I want to give credit where credit's due. So we have our dried peppers here, a mix of guajillo, uh, pasita, a little variation on Sam the Cooking Guy's uh, recipe. I have one dried chipotle in here. So we've taken these, we've got the seeds out, we've got the veins out and the stems out. This is all going to go into my Vitamix. And then on top of that is four cups of very hot beef broth. And the majority of that made it in there. And I've made a mess. Okay, we're gonna make sure all of our chilies are submerged so they can rehydrate and soften up. 
We have cooked with dried chilies and quite a few other uh, episodes here on the Galley of the Sun. The richness and depth of flavor that those chilies add is just incredible. You definitely want to try and cook with some dried chilies whenever you have a chance. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is in the Dutch oven behind me, I'm going to add a little bit of avocado oil, get that heated up, and then I'm going to, in batches, get all of my goat meat seared and set it aside. And then we'll talk about the next step after that's done. All right, just about done searing off the last batch of goat. So then what I'm gonna do is add my chopped onions to the Dutch oven. Cook those for about five minutes or so until they're good and translucent. And then we're gonna add the garlic, let it go for about 30 seconds or so. Then I'm gonna add the apple cider vinegar and get the pan deglazed. Uh, the searing off the goat has given us a beautiful fond in there. And then we'll start working on the sauce or consomme. All right, onions are in. You can hear them behind me. Let's get the sauce done. So we've had our dried chili sitting here in the beef broth for about 20 minutes. Now to that, we're going to add some Mexican oregano, some coriander, some cumin, a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Actually two cans, I gotta open up the other one. And then we're gonna add some chipotles and adobo sauce. And we'll get that all mixed up like Vitamixes do so well. If you don't have a super whamadine blender like a Vitamix, at this point you'll want to strain that for any parts of the chilies that didn't get mixed up, but a Vitamix will turn an iPhone into a liquid, so you don't have to worry about that. Happy with my onions, in goes the garlic, and then the vinegar to deglaze. Make sure you get uh, anything that was sticking to the bottom all scraped up, which is going to be real easy with that vinegar in there. We're going to let this cook for a few minutes until we uh, reduce the, the vinegar, the liquid, by about half. All right, so from this point, the heat goes off, the meat goes in, the sauce goes in. Mix all that up, and then it's going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for two to two and a half hours. Next, we will prep Chef Tom's recipe, which is a bit different. All right, now let's get going on Chef Tom's recipe. There are some similarities, there are some similar ingredients, but it's done quite a bit different. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the Dutch oven heated up with no oil in it, and I'm going to toast all these chilies about 30 to 90 seconds on medium high to high heat just to get uh, the aroma going. And then I'm gonna pull them off and we'll set them aside and we'll move on to the next step. So when you're executing Chef Tom's recipe, it is gonna make your life so much easier if when you de-seed, de-stem, de-vein those dried chilies that you leave them in as big of pieces as possible to make this next step easy for you. So as those peppers are toasting, we're also, just like we did with Sam the Cooking Guy's recipe, get a good amount of salt and pepper on our goat, get that mixed up and then we're gonna sear that off in batches. All right, the last batch of goat is getting seared off. As soon as I clear those from the pan, gonna add a little bit more avocado oil, add the onions, cook those till they're translucent, put the garlic in, just like we did with Sam the Cooking Guy's recipe, and then I would add ginger if I had it. I'm out of ginger. So I'm gonna use powdered ginger, but I'll add it after the next step, which is adding your tomatoes at that point. So a can of crushed San Marzano tomatoes and a can of uh, fire roasted diced tomatoes. We're gonna bring that up to a simmer. I'll add my ground ginger at that point, and uh, then we'll talk about the next step. All right, garlic's in, gonna let that go for a few minutes. Then with the tomatoes, I'm gonna add some Mexicano seasoning from Cattleman's Grill, stuff's absolutely amazing. 
and then a buttload of smoked paprika. Now, as I said before, I'll give you a link to uh, Chef Tom's uh, recipe, but quite a different spice profile than Sam the Cooking Guy. So this will really be interesting to see which one turns out awesome. Let me rephrase that. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they both turn out awesome because both of those guys put out some incredible food and I've never cooked anything that they've had on their channel that hasn't turned out amazing. Okay, tomatoes in. And our paprika, our catamons grill, and in my case, the ginger, because I didn't have fresh ginger. All right, big difference from Sam the Cooking Guy's recipe. Now those toasted chilies are going in whole along with the beef broth here. We're going to bring that to a simmer and let it go for about 20 minutes. All right, for a later step, I am preparing a satchel. I have a couple layers of cheesecloth here. In here, I have bay leaves, cinnamon stick, allspice berries, and cloves, whole cloves. So we'll get that all folded up and we'll get that tied up so our satchel's ready when we need it. Okay, satchel's made. See you in a bit. Alrighty, I'm all caught up in my dishes, and now it's time for the next step. So remember, with Sam the Cooking Guy's recipe, we took our chilies, we didn't toast them, we put them in beef broth, let them set for 20 minutes, and then we ground them up in the Vitamix. This time, we toasted our chilies with Chef Tom's recipe, then we added those to our tomato, onion, ginger, garlic broth in there and let them soften up in there for 20 minutes. Now I'm going to fish those chilies out, get them into the Vitamix, and then add uh, at least two cups of liquid. If you add more, that's fine, but you definitely need at least two to make sure you turn this into a liquid, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, really take your time with that step and be careful. Nobody wants to drip, bite into a uh, full chewy dried pepper as they're eating their taco. So we got it in there, now we liquefy. All right, feeling good where we are there. Now, everything goes back into the pot. Your ground up chili peppers, your satchel, some marrow bones, and all your goat. Once you have all that in there and mixed together, then you're gonna fill up your Dutch oven uh, with some water. As much as I'm doing, I'm gonna take it all the way to the rim, basically. Uh, you can sort of judge, but uh, remember, at the end of this, we wanna have a sauce that we can dip our taco into, just like you would have sauce for a French dip sandwich, right? The au jus. All right, all right, I'll tell you what, with all that meat, I've got all the way to the top, and it's still a little thick for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put that out on the smoker because I don't have room in my oven for both uh, Dutch ovens. Gonna put it on the smoker, let that cook for about an hour. Then I'm gonna go out there with some water in this pitcher here so I don't lose any of that fantastic flavor that uh, we have put together and add that and thin it down a little bit, give it a stir and move on. So we'll see you once all of the berry of meat is done. All right, so now to the Guga portion of today's episode. We're gonna make some seasoned chili oil to dip our tortillas in to get them crispy. So what I got here, I'm doing a triple batch because I have a lot of tacos to make and it'll save after you make it. So I got three cups of canola oil. We're gonna heat that to about 300 degrees. Now I know you're used to going to 350 to 375 whenever you're going to fry something, but we do not want to burn these spices. We don't want to burn the chilies. So make sure you're keeping a close eye on this and don't go above 300. To make sure, I have my trusty IR gun. All right, we're there, about 300. So in goes my dried Guajillo chilies, and I'm going to let those simmer in that oil for about five minutes. And you can see immediately when those chilies hit the oil that their oils release and it gets darker. All right, so our chilies have been in the oil for five minutes. Now we're gonna strain those out of there. Okay, we're gonna end up discarding those. Now goes in our spices. So in goes Mexican oregano, garlic powder, black pepper, smoked paprika, and brown sugar. Now we're gonna get that all mixed in. And we're, once again, keeping our temperature around 300 so we don't burn these spices, because that's the last thing you want to do. We're going to let this go for about five minutes. Then we will turn off our heat, take the 
seasoned chili oil off the heat and then strain it. And that is gonna be what we dip our corn tortillas into before we make our tacos. All right, it's been five minutes. Gonna turn the heat off. Gonna set the oil off the heat. And then we will get that strained and we'll be ready to make some goat quesabiria tacos. The meat is finally done. Now we've got our oil done. It is time to make the tacos. I mean your tortillas, not your tacos. It's just a mild-mannered tortilla right now. It's not a taco yet. And get those on the griddle. Step two, get some of that fine goat birria meat on them. Use a slotted spoon because one, we're trying to get this shell crispy. And two, you want to save that incredible juice to dip your taco in. All right, next goes your choice of cheese. You can use cojita, you can use cheddar. I'm using Monterey Jack on these. And then for a little freshness, just a little bit of cilantro on each one of them. Once we got that done, take your tortilla and fold it over, making your classic taco shape. Push down a little bit, and we're gonna let that fry on one side until we get that side good and crispy, and then we'll flip it. Previously, I had done this in a cast iron skillet inside the house. I will tell you the room of the griddle makes this seven billion times easier. Seven billion. Now we just wait. I have about 10 folks over today, so when I get ready to try both the Sam the Cooking Guy and the Chef Tom versions, I'll give you my opinion and I'll tell you what the group vote was. All right, so I just got done cooking. Everybody else is eight. There's about 13 people here today and it was unanimous. Um, the Chef Tom method was their favorite. Now that's fine, Sam. Still love you. And remember, our third or fourth episode was roast beef. And we did one Sam the Cooking Guy style. We did one Chef Tom style. And Chef Tom lost that one. So now it's even one to one. I'm going to give you my judgment real quick. So this right here is from the Sam the Cooking Guy batch and the Sam the Cooking Guy sauce. Mmm. Mmm. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Even though the crowd here chose Chef Tom's from ATBBQ the sauce, Sam's is absolutely incredible. So now we'll try the one with Chef Tom from ATBBQ. Mm. I can immediately tell what won it for Chef Tom. I probably have uh, red juice dripping all over my face. But the cinnamon and the cloves, the depth of flavor that those added is just absolutely amazing. So our 11, no, our eight hour journey, our eight hour journey is complete. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw today. I certainly enjoyed doing it. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and never miss an episode. Hit that bell and you'll get a notification. You can't possibly miss it. Thank you so much for supporting us. And until next time, fair winds and following seas. Mm -hmm.